Okay, so this time we focus on the global perspective on government management. No, uh, the Philippines is known uh, for its democratic system. No, uh, with a government structure that includes the executive, the legislative, and the judicial branches. So the global perspective open acknowledges the country's commitment to democratic principles, but Concerns have been raised about issues such as corruption and political dynasties, which can impact the effectiveness of democratic institutions. The global press observes the have generally viewed the economic policy of the Philippine government with interest. No, so the country has experienced economic growth no, in recent years, and its economic policies such as tax reforms and infrastructure projects had been closely watched. No? However, challenges like income inequality and poverty remain significant concerns that international institutions often highlight. The Philippines maintain a diplomatic ties no, with various nations globally. In recent years, no, there has been scrutiny over the country's stance on geopolitical issues, including the his relationship with major powers like China and United States, the South China Sea, no dispute in issues related to foreign policy alignment have garnered international attention. <clears throat> the global community has raised human rights, no concern in the Philippines, particularly in <clears throat> relation to the war on drugs, no reports of extrajudicial killing, and concerns about the rule of law have prompted international organizations and governments to call for accountability and respect for human rights. <clears throat> the Philippines faces environmental challenges such as deforestation, deforestation uh, pollution, and natural disasters. So global perspective open stress no, that's the importance of sustainable policies to address these issues. So <clears throat> international collaboration no, and support for environmental initiatives in the Philippines have been key areas of discussion. The global COVID-19 pandemic has brought attention to healthcare system worldwide, no, including the Philippines. Observers have noted challenges no, in the healthcare infrastructure, <clears throat> vaccine distribution, and overall pandemic response. So improvements in international cooperation in addressing health crisis are, of, uh, are areas of interest. So another is that the, the quality and accessibility of education in the Philippines have been global focal points. International organizations often emphasize the needs of reforms to enhance the education system, improve illiteracy rates, and address issue of the inequality and access access the quality education. The Philippines, even we have the ICT, no, uh, the, the Philippine efforts in embracing technology and fostering innovation no, have been re recognized globally. So initiative to boost the tech sector and encourage innovation has been positively viewed with the country being positioned uh, as a potential hub for technology development and entrepreneurship in Southeast Asia. And to give us more details about the topic, let us all welcome our presenter. Go ahead. Thank you, Thank you. very much, sir. Uh, my report is about the global perspective on government management. What is the global uh, global uh, government management. Global governance refers to the collective efforts and mechanism by which countries, international organizations, non-governmental entities, and other actors work together to address global challenges and manage common affairs. It involves the development and implementation of rules, norms, policies, and institutions that influence and guide the behavior of states and other global actors. Uh, these are the global government models. Uh, global government models is a broad term encompassing the frameworks, institutions, rules, and processes that guide co cooperation and address challenges on a global scale. Uh, the three predominant models are the state-centric model, which primarily centered around the role of the nation as the key actors of international relations. Next is the multilateral model. Uh, it emphasizes cooperation and coordination among multiple states and international organizations. And next is the multi-stakeholder model. Promotes inclusivity, 
by involving diverse stakeholders such as governments, NGOs, businesses, and civil society. Next is a comparative study of the go global government, the global governance model. In decision making, the state centric models may involve hierarchical decision making, while multilateral and multi stakeholder models promote more inclusive decision making process. The flexibility, 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 multi stakeholders, uh, multi stakeholders. Mo ah, sorry, sorry. Multi-stakeholder models tend to be more flexible and adaptable to diverse perspectives while state-centric models may face challenges in accommodating varied interests. The power dynamics, the state-centric models often reflect power imbalances among states, while multilateral and multi-stakeholder mod models aim to address these imbalances through inclusive participation. The effectiveness of these models depends on the nature of the issue. Some challenges may be better <coughs> addressed through coordinated state action, while others benefit from multilateral or stakeholder collaboration. Governance models are not mutually inclusive, <coughs> uh, not mutually exclusive, and Elements of each may be pres present in various global Pardon governance me. and. Ilang na yung ilang ang dapat mawag ng isang safety officer? A for D, B fifteen, C ten, D twenty. Oh, excuse me, pa pamiyot po lang. Okay, ang center na ito ay isa sa mga reward. <coughs> okay, good. Live. The, effective, yes, yes. the effectiveness of a model often depends on the nature of the problem being addressed and the willingness of actors to cooperate. Additionally, governance mod models are dynamic and subject to change based on evolving global dynamics and emerging challenges. These are the some best practices in government management. <clears throat> Excuse me. Government management have a range of principles and strategies that are recognized for promoting effective, transparent, and accountable governance. While specific practices can vary based on the regional context and governance structure, several general principles are widely acknowledged and implemented across various countries. Some of the international best practices are strategic planning. <clears throat> strategic planning is a development, develop and implement comprehensive strategic plan that outline long-term goals, objectives, and performance indicators. <clears throat> performance, measurement, and evaluation establish a robust system of measuring and evaluating government performance against predetermined goals. Transparency and open government embrace transparency through open data initiatives Disclosure of information and citizen engagement. Public financial management implements sound financial management practices, including budget, transparency, effective fiscal policies, and efficient procurement. Rule of law and legal framework strengthen the rule of law through the robust legal framework, and independent judiciary and effective law enforcement. The ethical standard and anti-corruption measures establish and enforce ethical standard for public officials along with robust anti-corruption measures. The human resource management develop merit-based recruitment training and performance evaluation system for public servants. The e-government and digital transformation <clears throat> embrace digital technologies to enhance government services, improve efficiency, and increase accessibility. The citizen engagement and participation encourage citizen involvement, involvement in decision-making processes through consultations, public hearings, and 
participatory mechanisms. The risk management and resilience develop and implement risk management strategies to address economic, social, and environmental challenges. <clears throat> These best practices are often endorsed by international organizations such as the United Nations, the World Bank, and regional bodies and serve as benchmark for countries seeking to enhance the efficiency, effectiveness, and legitimacy of the government system. Implementation, however, requires a context-specific approach that considers the unique challenges and opportunities within each country. <clears throat> Successful government reforms around the world often share common characteristics and lessons that can be applied across different contexts. Some keys lessons drawn from successful government reforms are strong leadership and political will. Successful reforms are often driven by strong political leadership and clear commitment to change. Uh, one of the examples is the reforms in countries like Singapore under the leadership of Lee Kuan Yew highlight the impact of decisive leadership on governance transformation. The public consultation and participation involving citizens in the reform processes enhances legitimacy and ensure that policies are responsive to public needs. For example, uh, in Brazil's participatory budgeting, which involves citizens in decision-making and budget priorities, has been recognized for promoting transparency and accountability. In effective communication and stakeholder engagement, transparent communications and engagement with various stakeholders include civil society and private sector, are crucial for successful reforms. For example, in New Zealand, public sector reforms in 1980s involved extensive communication and engagement to garner support for changes. With effective communication and stakeholder engagement, transparent communications, and engagement with various stakeholders include civil society and private sector and crucial for successful reforms. The incremental and sequential approaches, reforms are often more successful when implemented incrementally <clears throat> Excuse me, sir. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> incremental and sequential approaches reforms are often more successful when implemented incrementally, allowing for adjustment and learning along the way. For example, in China's economic reforms initiated in the late 20th century were implemented gradually, contributing to sustained economic growth. Sorry. The evidence-based decision-making, implementing reforms based on thorough research and evidence helps ensure their effectiveness and sustainability. For example, in Sweden's welfare state reforms in 1990s were in formed by careful analysis of policies, outcomes, and data. The capacity building and training, building the capacity of public servants and providing training are essential for successful implementation of reforms. For example, the civil service reforms in Rwanda have included extensive training programs to enhance the, the skills and professionalism of public servants and officials. Flexibility and adaptability in response to changing circumstances and willingness to adapt policies contribute to the success of reforms. For example, since Singapore's continuous adaptation of its education system to meet evolving economic needs is a testament of the importance of flexibility. 
clear objectives and measurable goals. BPOM should have clear objective and measurable goals to track progress and ensure accountability. For example, in Germany's labor market reforms in the early, early 2000s were guided by a specific objective, including reducing unemployment and enhancing competitiveness. The international cooperation and learning. Learning from successful reforms in other countries and engaging in international co cooperation can provide valuable insights and supports. For example, Estonia's digital transformation benefited from international partnership and learning from the best practices in e-governance. The long-term vision and sustainability reforms require a long-term vision and policies should be designed with sustainability in mind. Like the Nordic the, the Nordic countries social welfare welfare reforms are characterized by long-term planning and commitment to society, social social equality. Now <clears throat> These lessons underscore the importance of holistic and strategic approach to government reforms, considering political, economic, social, and administrative factors. Successful reforms often involve a combination of leadership, citizen engagement, evidence-based decision-making, and adaptability to create lasting positive changes in governance. That's it for my report. Okay. The uh the, the global perspective on government institution in the Philippines had been multifaceted, no, encompassing various aspects of governance, economics, foreign relations, and socio political issues. Okay. The the country's uh democratic system has been both praised no for its adherence to democratic principles. And character and criticize for challenges such as corruption and political dynasties. So the institution framework, no, including the executive, legislative, and judicial branches, has been under scrutiny, you no, know, and concern uh, persists regarding the effectiveness and integrity of this institution. <clears throat> Economically, you no, know, the, the Philippines has granted, uh, has garnered, you no, know, international attention for its robust economic growth and various policy initiatives. So katulad ng sinabi ko kanina, tax reforms infrastructure pro project had been focal points no but economic challenges including income equality and poverty remain significant concern no so in terms of foreign relation no uh, we are all aware about the south china sea no and, and other uh, countries alignment with different ge geopolitical forces has implications for regional stability uh, human rights issues, no, particularly to the government's war on drugs, no, uh, laging ano yun, eh, topic yan every day, every ano, lagi, eh, weekly, no. So the human rights situation in the Philippines has been a topic discussions in international forums also, with organizations and government advocating uh, for a respect, no, uh, human rights and <clears throat> due process. So giving the evolving nature of global affairs, no, it's crucial, no, to consider more re recent sources for the latest information on the perspective of government institution in the Philippines. Changes in leadership, policy shifts, and external dynamics can significantly impact how the world views the political institutional landscape of our countries. 